Hola, I'm Margaret from Moon in Spain and I'm greeting you from the city of Antequera in Andalusia. We're in the province of Malaga right now. I'm standing in front of the Paredor of Antequera and we are going to walk you through this beautiful city and also show you the Paredor here. So come with us and let's enjoy the walk through the town. So just a couple minutes walking down from the Parador, we find the Plaza de Toros, so the bull ring, um, which was inaugurated in 1848, um, but the renovations have left it completely different from the original structure. Um, it also has a beautiful restaurant inside the bull ring called Plaza de Toros, um, where you can have a lovely meal right inside the actual bull ring. So September 8th is actually the day of the Virgen de los Remedios, or the Virgin of Remedy, who is the patroness saint of Antequera. Obviously there was no procession um, going on today, but we did get to stop and see a bit of the mass that was being held um, in the church. It is said that the image actually of the Virgen de los Remedios was brought to Antequera by the Apostle Santiago or St. James to protect the town. Okay, we are now in probably the most beautiful square or plaza in Antequera. It's called San Sebastian. So here we'll find um, a collegiate church of St. Sebastian. Also um, one of the gates to the city from the 18th century. And also the crossing of the, all of the roads here in Andalusia. So here in the plaza we have a beautiful sculpture that is dedicated um, to two important people from Antequera. Um, an important poet and an important painter and it is named Art Without Time and also in this plaza we have the Collegiate Church of San Sebastian San Sebastian or Saint Sebastian and in front of it there is a Renaissance fountain and you can see across the way as well um, the 18th century arch um, that is named the Arch of the Nazareno, or the Arch of the Penitent. Here you have a better view of the Collegiate Church of San Sebastian. And also a better view of the 18th century um, gate of the city. And then here on the ground, there's a neat little um, map that shows us the, how Antequera is basically the center of Andalusia. So we find Antequera basically um, right in the center. We have Cordoba to the north, Jaén to the northeast, Granada to the east, um, Malaga to the south, Cadiz to the um, southwest, and the city of Sevilla as well to the west. Okay, so we just walked up to the top of the city of Antequera where the Alcazaba is. Well, we'll be in just a moment. But I just wanted to show you this great view of the city here from the top. Also, you have a beautiful view of, you can see the two rocks there. It's called the Peña de los Enamorados. It has a legend that tells a story of a beautiful Muslim um, girl. She was the daughter of one of important ruler in this area and she fell in love with a Christian man and their love could not be so they ran away together and eventually went off to the to those two rocks and threw themselves off so we call that rock um, the rock of the lovers or sometimes the leap of the lovers Peña de los Enamorados but here you have the beautiful view of the city of Antequera and now we're going to continue walking up towards the Alcazaba. So now just a bit further up we have um, another gate to the city, um, the Arco de los Gigantes. This is a 16th century arch and it's right here at the base of the entrance to the Alcazaba or the fortress of Antequera. And here also just outside and the walls of the 14th century Moorish fortress or Alcazaba. We have the church of Real Colegiata de Santa Maria la Mayor. It's um, built in the 
15th century, 15th, 16th century, late Gothic Renaissance church. So now you'll be able to see right below where I'm standing here, um, you're going to be, see the old um, Termas Romanas, the Roman baths. Um, so they were operating here in Antequera from about the second half um, of the first century AD and going well into um, the fifth century AD. And now you'll be able to see um, that the rest of the town up here, where the church is and where the um, Arab fortress is, the Al-Qasaba, is all built on top of what used to be the Roman city of Antequera. Okay, we just sat down to have something to eat right here in the plaza that's in front of the um, Church of Santa Maria and the Alcazaba, and we just ordered. The menu looked so good, so we decided to order something. I have a Malbec wine um, from the city of Cuenca in Castilla-La Mancha. Felipe has a beer, and then we ordered it's a brioche that has its um, deboned ribs with Chinese cabbage and shrimp, and then obviously fresh cut uh, fried potatoes. Buen provecho. Okay, so we had to stay for more food here because the first one was so good. So we got a, this is called, it's a white porra. Usually porra is made with tomatoes um, and garlic. It's like a tom cold tomato cream. And, but this one is white and has no garlic. It's just made with almonds. Um, and then it has, it's served with a vanilla ice cream and raisins okay so we basically cleaned the plate of the porra blanca which was absolutely amazing it was made with almonds and also some mango it could have easily been a dessert but now we have a, a confit of a pork shank it's served on top of pureed eggplants it has some nice greens on top and then we also we have some bread here that's traditional bread here from Antequera. It's called a mollete, which we eat a lot for breakfast as well with a toast um, with some tomato and ham. So we are going to enjoy our confit of pork shank in this beautiful atmosphere that we have here. And then continue on our walk. Okay, so we, of course, we had to order dessert because the food was so good. So we ordered something that we order in a lot of places, always waiting for it to be the same as it is in another place. This is a torrija, which is something that we eat actually um, during the Easter week in Spain. And I guess some people translate it to like a French toast because it's bread basically with egg and milk. But when you have it as a dessert, like we have here in this restaurant, um, it's usually sort of a step up from that. You can see it's like caramelized and it has um, the vanilla ice cream on it and some caramel and some cookie crumbs on top. So we are going to enjoy that dessert and then wander down back through the town. Okay, so now we are on our way walking back down um, from the area of the Alcazaba and where we just enjoyed the best and most reasonably priced meal that I have enjoyed in I don't know how long. The restaurant that we go to a lot here, you can read about it in my blog post um, that I'll put under this video. They're actually doing uh, restorations in the restaurant, but we ate at that amazing restaurant, Bien Me Sabe, and it was absolutely phenomenal but we're walking down here uh, through which was right below the Alcazaba the old Arab quarter here 
in Antequera and there's a beautiful statue here that reminds us of the six month siege in the year 1410 uh, when the prince Don Fernando eventually took over the city of Antequera um, from the Arabs and they actually went left Antequera and went to the city of Granada where they went to what is now known, well now it's a street near the Alhambra called the Antequerela. Um, so there's a beautiful statue here that is dedicated to the Arabs, the Muslims, leaving the city of Antequera and leaving and going on their way to the city of Granada in the year 1410. Okay, so we just made our way down back into the center of the city um, and we're lucky to find the church of the Berlin convent um, open for us to walk in and look at the inside of this beautiful church. Um, it's from the mid 16th century and originally the convent belonged to the order of the Barefoot Carmelites, um, but in the 19th century it was taken over um, by the poor Clare. Um, the Order of the Poor Clares. Um, you can see it's the shape of a Latin cross and then it has the um, connecting, interconnecting side chapels and a raised vault, um, beautiful Baroque plaster work you could see throughout the church. Um, there's also some beautiful artwork as well. Um, actually the main facade of the church um, when we were first walking up um, is fairly plain, uh, mostly um, made out of stone and brick. You could also see the entrance to where you can go in and purchase sweets that are made by the um, cloistered nuns here. Okay, here you can see the Iglesia de Santiago or the Church of St. James the Apostle. I didn't go in because there's a funeral going on. Um, there was originally just a small chapel that was built here. Um, and then this church was built on top of that in the 18th century. And we are right on the Camino Mots Arabe that goes to the pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela. Mots Arabic refers to um, Iberian Christians that lived under Muslim rule. Okay, so we're taking a walk through the beautiful center of Antequera. And I love all the entrances to the homes here. Here you can see Typical Andalusian interior patio here with the fountain in the center and then the apartments built around the, the patio. So here you have a better view of um, the convent of the uh, Barefoot Carmelites or the Discalced Carmelites that was founded by St. Teresa from Avila and St. John of the Cross and a better close-up uh, the beautiful plaza that's right here next to the convent as well. Okay, so now I'm walking through what is now called the Plaza Coso Viejo. Um, it used to be called the Plaza de la Verdura or the Vegetable Square. This is where they used to um, they used to hold markets, food, open air food markets. So it was called the Square of the Vegetables. Now it's called the Plaza de Coso Viejo. We have a statue here of King Fernando I, the King of Aragon. And also behind it, um, the Museum of Antequera, which is held in an 18th century palace called the Palace of Najera. So we're gonna continue walking on back down the main street, back towards the Parador. Okay, now I just want to show you a bit of the Parador of Antequera. Here you have a view looking out of the Vega or the agricultural area outside of the city. Um, but this is just from the outside area of the Parador. Um, the Parador of Antequera, the building now was constructed in 2008, but it was actually um, 
and one of the original net of paradores that began um, in 1928, the first one being opened in the Sierra de Gredos um, near the city of Avila. It was an idea of the last king of Spain, Alfonso the Thirteenth, um, the last king before the Spanish Civil War to promote tourism in Spain. Um, and many of the paradores are located in historic buildings such as convents or monasteries, old hospitals, um, palaces, castles. Um, so Antequera is one of the modern paradores that we have, um, but it's still just a lovely place to stay. Um, you could see some of the breakfast here. They have local cheese um, and local products, local sweets as well. Um, they even have one of the traditional desserts called Bien Me Sabe, um, which is prepared with almonds and eggs and cinnamon. And you also have a beautiful view looking out from the restaurant, which also serves, it's in the same place as the breakfast area, but they also serve a lot of the um, traditional dishes from this area as well. And with a gorgeous view, also looking out onto the Vega. Okay, I'm gonna show you some images um, from a hike that we did about a year ago. Uh, through the nature reserve of El Torcal, which is just outside of Antequera. You could see um, the amazing Jurassic Age limestone, which dates um, to about 150 million years ago. Thank you for joining us for this glimpse of the city of Antequera. Please remember to hit like if you enjoyed the video and also remember to hit subscribe with the bell if you'd like to be reminded every time we post a new video. Also if you'd like to you can take a look at my blog posts that are posted in the description of the video as well. And thank you as always for joining. Hopefully some of you will be back with me visiting some of these places and towns and historic paradores in the near future. So see you soon. Hasta pronto.